Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special. Even if your relationship feels completely hopeless, I'm Laura Doyle, and today we're going to talk about who has the most power in your relationship. I'm going to tell you how to figure that out and what you can do about it. My guest, Stephanie, had one failed marriage and a failed rebound relationship, and she was pretty sure that her relationship with a Latin waiter was also a big mistake because she broke up with him almost every week. But today she is happily married to that Latin waiter who likes to make her dreams come true. She's going to tell us the secrets for how she made her high drama romance dreamy. And then I'll be giving out the award for the worst relationship advice of the week, which in my experience just makes a big problem where there was no problem before. You've probably done it. I know I did. All that is coming up. But first, let's talk about who has the most power in your relationship. If you've ever felt annoyed and upset about how I always talk about what wives and girlfriends can do to fix their relationships, but never what husbands can do, you're not alone. It's so reasonable to ask, why is it always on the woman to fix the relationship? I mean, relationships take two for sure. So why does he get a pass on his bad behavior? So how about if we give men 50% of the responsibility too, huh? That was my thinking too, early in my marriage. I I knew he was half responsible for our problems, and I actually thought he was responsible for like 90% of our problems. And my fantasy was that if my husband would only change those things, then I would finally be happy. But that never worked. Of course it didn't. That is not how life works. It wasn't until I started cleaning up my side of the street that my husband responded to me so much better. And that's when I finally got the marriage I dreamed of when I said, I do. And guess what? Then he changed too. So in my marriage, I was the one with the key. I was able to transform the culture of our family to make it relaxed and playful instead of tense and distant. And all those years that I was focused on what he should change, it turns out I had the power and I just didn't know it. What about in your relationship? Who has more power? You might think that if your man told you he doesn't love you or he is already gone or if he has another woman or won't communicate with you, uh, you might think he's the one that has the power. You might think there's nothing you can do now. I can see why you think so. But one of the things that is still breathtaking to see is how many women are able to improve their relationships, even though their situations seem completely hopeless. They just needed the right information and support. And then they were able to create miracles. I think of the student whose husband held her hand in the car for the first time in 10 years, or another student whose husband left his living mistress and came home and apologized to his wife and said he loved her and only her. Or another one where they had been in a cold war for years and they reconciled and went on a trip that felt like a honeymoon. Thousands of students report these dramatic turnarounds and they report that their husbands changed too. Of course he did. He had to learn the steps of the new dance that she was doing. Those men became better partners. And she found out as soon as she decided to focus on what she could change about how she showed up in her relationship that she had more power than she thought. So if that was my experience, and that was their experience, and the experience of all the women I interview on the Empowered Wife podcast, does that mean you have more power in your relationship? As the expert on your own life, only you know for sure. On our campus, we serve women only. And I admit that it can be off-putting to hear that or think that I'm not getting how difficult your man may be to deal with, especially if you're hoping that he's going to get help. It's not that I'm giving him a pass on his bad behavior. It's, it's not because I blame women for all relationship problems. Definitely not. It's because I see women as powerful. And once they see how to use their power to create playful, passionate relationships, they are unstoppable. I see a lot of impressive accountability from my students. And I got to say, that is so attractive. Blaming or being a victim is one of the least attractive states. And being accountable is just the opposite of that. It makes you like supermodel hot. 
accountability also tends to bring out the best in people around you because it elevates them when you aren't blaming or pressuring them. But it's not always easy. Sometimes when there's a breakdown, I still don't want to look at how I contributed to that. I'm like, I'm just going to be a victim today and pretend this is happening to me and that I was just here not causing any of it or contributing at all. You know, I want to say like, did you see what God just did to me? But that gets pretty old. And it's a lot harder to do that when I'm around my students because I know you expect me to be accountable. So that keeps me motivated. I mean, let's face it, you're only here because you are accountable. And I find that very attractive. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at GetCherished.com. Go to GetCherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. So I'm so excited today to have Coach Stephanie on the show because she is one of the best relationship coaches in the world. But there was a time when she could not have helped anyone with their relationship. She had one failed marriage and then a failed rebound relationship. And she was pretty sure that her relationship with a Latin waiter was also a big mistake because she broke up with him repeatedly, sometimes weekly only to get back together within a day or two every time. But today, she has not only transformed her lonely, on-again, off-again, blow-up-filled relationship into a peaceful and passionate marriage with two little boys, she has helped hundreds of women fix their broken relationships. She leads the small group coaching program on our campus, writes the weekly inspiration for our students, and also teaches and certifies relationship coaches. So she's incredibly wise and experienced with fixing broken relationships that seem hopeless. So welcome, Stephanie. It's great to have you here. How did you, uh, how did this journey to becoming one of the best relationship coaches in the world start out for you? Thank you, Laura, for that beautiful introduction. My journey started with pain and lots and lots of resentment and just feeling really alone. Uh, I remember one time in particular where Um, I was pregnant with our first child and we had gotten a false positive on the Downs syndrome test. So, um, so yeah, it was recommended that we get an amnio and it was just, that was a really hard decision to make just what to do with that. And a time when I, I most needed support and comfort. And I remember, you know, we decided to go ahead and do the amnio and I remember heading to that appointment by myself and furious with my husband. I can't even tell you what we were arguing about. That was just, you know, normal. Often probably arguing about arguing, who knows? But I just remember like I was just crying and I felt so just utterly alone and so upset, angry with him that I would have to go through that alone. And he couldn't be bothered to be by my side. And it just it it brought back other, a lot of other pain. Like I spent the first night of our honeymoon alone. I spent our wedding night alone. And I thought, yeah, and here we're about to have a baby. And I just saw the whole future you know, spread out in front of me. And that's what it looked like. Me alone. Ah, so. so why even be married, right? If you're going to spend your wedding night alone and go to these going to a big, um, kind of a scary doctor's appointment about your first child together alone. It sounds, it sounds incredibly lonely. It sounds heartbreaking. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, at that point, we didn't realize it was a false positive. You know, it was, it was very scary. Um, it turned around. Yeah, I just, I was so baffled. I was so baffled because if there's any point where I felt like, oh yeah, I could, kind of get what I wanted and get what I needed. This, this would be the time. And I just, I couldn't, could not make that happen. I had no idea what I was doing wrong. 
That's hard. I just, well, yeah, I knew what, I thought I knew the problem. It was all him. <laughs> yeah, the problem was all, yeah. He, yeah really. he was a, a jerk, apparently, or uncaring. Or what, what did you think was wrong at that yeah. point? Yeah, I just thought I married the wrong guy. Okay, you just chose badly. Yeah. You just and made I, a mistake. You needed to start over. What, uh, what were some of the other challenges that you guys were having in your relationship? Well, I know even before I got pregnant, I just I felt very unsupported. So, for example, I would just I would see that sink full of dirty dishes when we, we lived in an apartment together. And, uh, and I thought, yeah, there it is. That's the big sign that he doesn't love me. How can I even have a child with this person if he can't even manage to take out the trash or do these dishes? He just doesn't really care about me uh, enough to get off the sofa. And you'd, you'd been warned that this was going to happen, right? You'd been warned off of uh, Latin men, they're, they're macho or they're jealous or something, right? Yes, a- yes. several friends have warned me <laughs> <laughs> against, yeah, don't. Don't marry a Latino. They're so. Oh, and don't marry a waiter. No, bad idea. Um, yeah. And so that probably contributed to the storyline in your head. Like, oh, I, I should have seen this coming. This is like I, I. This is more evidence that you've chosen wrongly. It sounds like. Yes. Yeah, they were right. I yeah, thought, I thought they were right. My well-meaning friends. Was, was there ever a day like a low point that you felt like okay, things can't keep going like this? Uh, so f- for sure the amnio day was one of those low points. So I have to say he ended up showing up oh. at the appointment. <laughs> I went through a lot of grief <laughs> for nothing. He, he showed up, but it's, it, it's still, you know, I felt pretty alone anyway, cause I was still so angry with him. It didn't never unfolded the way I would have liked. Yeah. Um, no, it was just. It was just more of a chronic, daily, I'm unsupported, I'm all alone, I have to do everything on my own. Uh, I even, I made chore charts where, yeah, I just, okay, he could be responsible for this, and I would do this, and he was always, you know, eager to please, like, oh, yeah, 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 I'll do my chore chart, (laughs) did not work out so well, and uh, he made it really clear because he had joined the Marines and he said he got traumatized doing dishes in the Marines. So there, there was not going to be any you know, dish doing none of that women's work for him. So, and I'm not, I don't know. I just told him he should have picked a different wife if, if he needed somebody to wait on him and the way that he was raised. So yeah, there was a lot contributing to my, that storyline. We were just, we were too different. Yeah. And then, so there were a lot of uh, arguments about this, right? Blow blow ups. And some choice words were thrown around, it sounds like. Yeah, for sure. Actually, now that you mention it, I think that was a low point because I, I was determined once I became a mother that I I was going to raise my children, my child, uh, you know, just in a loving environment and not have you know, the cursing and yelling and and things I had witnessed myself. And so then when I found myself, and I I had done a lot of work on myself, like I was the queen of self-improvement. And I, I had, I had changed in a lot of ways. And yet, when I found there we were, screaming and cursing at each other in front of our little child, I'm like, no, despite my best intentions that I couldn't even like, I couldn't even manage that one thing. That was a low point. So important to you. So what did, what did you tell yourself? How you're going to, you're going to change this. You were going to leave. What, how did you leave? leave. leave. Yes. Out. Default position. Uh, I mean, I was, I was sitting on that fence and it was really uncomfortable and I would just lie awake at night because, you know, as a waiter, my husband would usually go out after work. You know, he had lots of adrenaline and he needed to unwind. And I thought, that's there's my other the other sign. Like he doesn't really love me. He's not choosing me. He's choosing the bar over me. 
And I knew that meant the next day he'd be too tired to spend time with me or, you know, once our child came, our child. So, yeah, I would just lie in bed awake at night, fuming, angry. And, uh, yeah, I just thought, okay, I need to give him an ultimatum. Like, you better shape up or ship out or, or I'm, you know, I'm going to be out. All right. You're going to be out. Yeah. So did you, did you give him that ultimatum? No, I really, I want another baby. (laughs) So uh, so instead I got pregnant and I just, I knew that I wasn't prepared to follow through on the ultimatum. It wouldn't really be honest. So instead I found you, Laura. (laughs) All right. So tell me about that. So how, how, what, what, what was the beginning of the breakthrough? I mean, you obviously transformed this relationship pretty dramatically now. So how did that start? Yes. Well, it started because I met you and I I felt like I was just being really impulsive um, because I decided I wanted to come out to a retreat you were having a, a weekend. And I mean, before I had dismissed all this coaching stuff, like, no, I, I can do it on my own. I got your book and I tried to start a surrendering circle. So I went on meetup and it was going to be this very official thing. And only one of my friends came to it and it just, it fizzled out in no time. So I thought, okay, well I can do it on my own. So armed with your book, I said, I'm going to change my husband. And I got home and I was the best wife ever for like a week (laughs) for a week. I just bit my tongue when I wanted to say the usual things I would say. And, um, and I was waiting for him to turn into your husband (laughs) and start doing the dishes. And it wasn't happening. He just stayed on the sofa. And I, so then I just was more infuriated than ever. And I thought, Oh, this isn't working. It's just, yeah. Further proof. Like he's, he's like the wrong guy or he's not, he's not a good husband for you because you did all this stuff I said and it still didn't work. So obviously it must be him still. Right. Yeah, for sure. It was clearly him. But uh, I just, I also saw I couldn't do it on my own. And um, so, yeah, I then, even though I dismissed all this coaching stuff, once I found out that you were having this event, I just, I had this desire, like, oh, I want to go. And so I expressed my desire to him. And he said, yeah, of course, go. Even though, like, we had a little, a young child. Like I don't just race off across the country. And then I expressed my desire to my sister. I told her I was going and invited her. And she's always, oh, maybe I might have to work. And she instead she said yes, which was a rare event. And then my mother-in-law said yes to watching the kids. So I get there and I just felt called. I wanted to become a coach. And I want, so I decided to express this desire to my husband in a way that inspires, but I know, I knew full well, this would not, this was not going to work for me because I, I was losing my job. The school where I taught was closing down. So we had, I had enough money to tide us over to becoming just to having one income and Anyway, I called my husband. It was in the middle of the night in his time zone. And here I expressed this desire. And I know he's going to tell me, you're crazy. You're just, you're naive. You know, what are they selling you over there? None of that. I said, I would love to do this coach training. And he said, oh, you would be perfect for that. Go for it. And man, still to this day, I just am filled with gratitude. I'm covered in goosebumps right now to share that with you. Because if he hadn't said yes in that moment, I just would still, I'd be grading papers and I'd be thinking, oh yeah, I have this great job, but really I'm feeling unfulfilled and not having found my passion and living the life that I get to live today because doing the, expressing that desire, it transformed my marriage, transformed my home life with my family, transformed my career, um, my leisure time, everything. And I'm just, so I'm filled with gratitude every time I remember. 
that I had the courage to express that desire and that he said yes. <laughs> and I totally did not expect it. Wow. It's, that's an amazing story. It gives me goosebumps too. Because I, I mean, I think about how close we came to almost not having you on our campus. That, mm-hmm. I mean, any his, yeah, that answer was, um, it seems pretty miraculous in a way that he, that he said that. So I love that. So, and what, what, so what impact did becoming a coach have on your relationship? You're just saying it changed everything, but let's start, start with the relationship. How did that impact it? Yes. Well, becoming a coach meant I have to practice what I preach. (laughs) So, you know, I can't coach someone on say expressing your desires in a way that inspires and then not do it myself. Or I can't coach you on self care and not go and, and tend to my own happiness. I can't coach you on restoring respect, you know, say apologizing for being disrespectful um, without saying, oh, wait, yeah, I, I said that thing. Oh, suddenly it's not sitting right with me. And I think I need to go clean that up. And sometimes I can, I can still sweep that under the rug until I'm coaching another woman and I'm, I need it doesn't feel it wouldn't feel good to be a hypocrite. I need to have integrity. So as soon as I'm coaching her, I hear what I need to hear too. And it just it keeps me accountable, keeps me engaged and just living these skills. And it keeps me inspired. Because just seeing my clients, how their commitment and how badly they want that transformation. And uh, yeah, just how devoted they are to the skills. Um, I've, I constantly feel inspired. You know, I remember your, your very first client even had, you had a huge client win with, as, as I recall, right? Was it your very first client, I think? Yes. So tell us about that. Yeah, yeah my very first client, uh, her husband told her that he was leaving her and their two children. And... So, I mean, she, she was desperate and she had no idea until after he did move out that he was seeing another woman and actually that he had slept with multiple women over the course of their marriage. And I thought, wait, this is the first client they give me. I, you know, infidelity and this isn't part of my story. How, how can I inspire her? And you know what? It's the same skills, the same skills that transformed my marriage that I got to share with her. And that, you know, it was easy to buy into her fear. Like this wasn't going to work for her. She was just being a fool to even believe, have faith. And it worked for her. And she, her husband had moved, he had already signed a lease on another house. I believe he purchased the house. He'd already moved out of the country to be with the other woman. And then one day he came home and he said, he told her, I miss you. I love you. And she kept waiting for the but, because this whole time he had blamed her for for their problems. And instead of the but, he said, I love you. And I'm I'm sorry. And he came home to her. Wow. And that and this is this is years ago now because you've helped Hundreds of women fix their relationships. This is just one example, but you, you came you came right out of the gate with a, a big bang. But let's get back to see your relationship now too, because last I heard, so he was not doing the dishes. He was just kind of laying on the couch. So how is that how is that different at your house now, or is it different? Oh yes, things are very different at our house now. Um so yeah. Okay. Lately, I'm just amazed because it gets, it keeps getting better and better. Just like that, your book title, things will get as good as you can stand. I mean, I wake up in the morning and now mind you, he doesn't always, he doesn't do the dishes on my schedule. But one day he did tell me out of the blue, I wasn't asking for it. Just out of the blue. He said, you know what? I think I'm going to do the dishes every day to help you out (laughs) i'm flabbergasted wow where where did this come from so um, this is the same guy that was traumatized in the military by doing dishes and correct yeah he made it clear he 
was not doing dishes. <laughs> he just offered. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm going to do dishes every day. Um, so it doesn't mean it's on my schedule. And sometimes I go to bed and there's a big mess in the kitchen. And lately I wake up in the morning and the kitchen is clean. Not only the dishes, but the counters. And I'm, it's like that kitchen elf that I was so resentful that I thought, Oh, what I'm supposed to be this kitchen elf doing dishes every time you mess them up. And so he's a kitchen elf. <laughs> and, um, I have, I have no idea how he does it without waking me up. Sometimes he does it at two o'clock in the morning when he can't sleep. And anyway, I feel very taken care of and supported and I feel so loved with just it's amazing to me. And how's the passion at your house? Uh, well, I, I thought I could have the peace. I didn't know if I could have peace and passion. You know, things got really peaceful around here and I was happy. And, you know, we'd still have sex here and there. I I would have been happy with maybe once a week. Like I was hoping to build up to that. And I heard, would hear other coaches like, oh, we just, we did it in the backseat of the car. And I was kind of jealous. Like, why don't I have that? <laughs> and um, And then again, it just keeps getting as good as you can stand. And we, like, he started initiating uh, almost pretty much every day. I, I never imagined that things could get back to the way they were when we were first together. Like, uh, he didn't uh, either. Like, he had told me he was done. Like, he had used up his kind of sexing energy or something like that. Like, he had also made, like, he was kind of done. Like, just don't expect much from me. About yeah. Me. And, uh. So today, now, it's like more often than not, I'm... Now, some women might consider that a burden. Like, my husband wants sex every single day, and I'm, I've got kids, I work, I'm tired. But that doesn't sound like your position on this. Well, no. We, we have to make up for lost time. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, so it wasn't happening, and now it's happening, and you made that happen. You created that environment where that's happening. And your husband even has advice for other people about how to improve their marriages now, yes. right? Yes. And if it were a burden, I wouldn't do it. But yeah, I think my husband fancies himself, you know, he's kind of the, the relationship coach, uh, the men's relationship coach. So we were having a play date and there was a, a single mother here at our house. And first of all, the fact that my husband was here and present for this play date, I mean, that alone speaks to our transformation. Anyway, so he, unsolicited, he goes to her, do you want to know the secret to a good marriage? And, and uh, he goes, my wife speaks the language of gratitude. We said, we both do. And so I'm like, wow, I... I didn't know. I had no idea if the things I was saying, you know, the magical phrases that I learned here, if they were really getting through. You know, I never heard him saying, oh, thanks for expressing your gratitude just means so much to me. I didn't know if he was even hearing it. So to hear him say that, I, yeah, such a gratitude it was so beautiful. Wow. Was there was there a moment in your marriage where you thought, like, wow, we have just come so far from where we were? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, let me think. What's one turning point? Oh, yeah, I remember when, during my coach training when I he was going somewhere, and I think I asked where he was headed, and he said, I'm going to make your dreams come true. And it was something to do with increasing the, his life insurance amount, which was something he knew I wanted. But I just felt like, like wow, my knight in, knight in shining armor showed up. And I'm just like, I'm, I get to be treated like a queen. And he's just out there taking care of me. And it was so sweet. I'm going to make your dreams come true. I love it. I love it. So what is something you'd say so to a woman who's also feeling alone, like she's going to important doctor's appointments by herself or spends, you know, spend her wedding night and her honeymoon night alone and 
wants to create this kind of relationship where her husband just wants to make her dreams come true and he offers to do the dishes every day and 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 there's all this physical intimacy happening um what what would would be your tip for her Hmm. um well I would say one of the mistakes that I was making was criticizing him for how he spent his time and trying to get him to spend time with me, make him spend time with me and telling him how unhappy I was and how far he was falling short in making me happy. Uh, And I was just, I was making him responsible for my happiness when I didn't even know what I wanted. I didn't even know how to make me happy. Uh, So I realized I was magnifying what was missing and uh, which is exactly what I didn't want to increase, right? And um, so I would tell her, I would invite her to choose what she wants to increase and to focus on that and choose to shift her focus to what she does want. And, uh, and along the way to, yeah, to learn, get in touch with what it is that you want and and become responsible for your happiness instead of sitting around waiting for him to make you happy when he probably doesn't he might not know how either might not might not know because if you don't know yourself how, how is he going to figure that out right it's pretty big tall order for him to figure out how to make you happy when you don't even know yourself so i love that i love that tip is there anything if you could travel back in time and talk to yourself back when you were really struggling in your marriage, when you were really suffering and feeling alone and feeling like you wanted to leave, but you also wanted another child. So you're going to stay. I mean, what do you know now that you didn't know then? What what would you say to yourself? I think at first say, (laughs) I'm not very nice with my (laughs) self-talk. Just shut up. (laughs) first of all shut up (laughs) yes because so much of what was coming out of my mouth was really disrespectful and controlling and I just I didn't know any other way to try to get what I wanted um and uh but yeah, I know at the same time that you know when I got your book and I tried to do it all on my own that just biting my tongue that alone didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. I got even more resentful. So it's not just, you know, put on the duct tape as we call it, but yeah, really becoming responsible, become responsible for your own happiness, Stephanie. And and just to learn what it is that, that you want and that would make you happy. And then don't be afraid to say it. Not trying to, convince him or explain or any of that just saying like I would love I would love to go to the park I would love to go to the new Thai place whatever it's been magical for me just wow. like something so simple like wow wow all I have to say is what I want and he's that knight in shining armor let's go yes let's do it oh you want to do coach training do it yes <laughs> so Oh, I feel, get to feel so supported. It's beautiful. Well, congratulations on this wonderful uh, family that you've created, Stephanie. It sounds like, I mean, it's like a whole family that wouldn't maybe even exist if you hadn't done all this work, if you hadn't been so committed and so courageous. Um, You know, there's this, this beautiful family of four that is now thriving and having all this emotional safety and your kids are getting to see a role model of what a healthy relationship looks like, a happy relationship, a, a passionate relationship. And uh, I just think that's so important. And I, I just think the world needs more women like you. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. And it, it is beautiful how it impacts the entire family that not only is there no more screaming and cursing in front of our kids or period. But uh, I remember one quick story. My, uh, my child, I don't know if he was four years old and I think I said, thank you. Anyway, he goes, Oh, thank you for saying thank you. 
<laughs> I'm like, wow, it, it really has transformed the entire culture of our home. So he was watching. Gratitude. He's watching mommy and daddy use the language of gratitude, and he learned it as his native language as a four-year-old, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. It must be such a gratifying moment as a mom to uh, equip him with that powerful, powerful skill. What do you say to that? Thank you for saying thank you. <laughs> so, I don't know. What did you say? <laughs> I don't know. So, You're Laura, welcome. speaking of gratitude, I just, I really want to express my gratitude to you for empowering me with this transformation. Oh. I just, I could never have imagined just having this, this happy, this happiness today for me and my whole family. Wow. Well, it's been my honor to be alongside you for this journey and watch all that you've created. It's so inspiring. And um, now that you're in, you're passing it forward. You know, you're this powerful coach who's helping others with their marriages. You are on the mission to end world divorce, standing shoulder to shoulder with me. And it's just, uh, it's just a thrill to watch you go. So. Thank you, Laura. I love it. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at GetCherished.com. Go to GetCherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. It's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice that's got me royal this week is that in order to feel close and soulmatey with your husband or boyfriend, you have to get him to open up about how he feels. This, I once believed, was the path to true connection. Of course, when I started asking my husband questions about how he felt, what I really wanted to know was, how do you feel about me? Do you love me a lot? Like, really, really, really? Also, what do you love about me the most? But I didn't ask him that. Instead of being vulnerable, I put on my junior therapist hat and said things like, how did you feel as a child when your dad was angry? And funny thing, my husband wasn't interested in talking about that. And he never mentioned what he thought about me as a result of those kinds of questions. And these days I don't ask him about his feelings and We have lots of deep, connected conversations, and I hear about how much he loves me every day. The University of Toronto did a study where they found out, and I hope you're sitting down for this because it's shocking. They found out that women are more emotional than men. So that was research money that was well spent, right? But listen, it means that women are emotionally brilliant. That means it's our job to talk about how we are feeling, not trying to get them to talk about how they're feeling. So the good news is that when you bring your authentic feelings to the relationship, instead of asking about his, especially the vulnerable connecting feelings, you'll be creating fertile ground for intimacy. And for those reasons, the advice that in order to be close, you have to get him to open up about his feelings is the worst advice I've heard all week. Be sure to subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll be sharing what to do if your man is not attracted to you. I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I grew up in Huntington Beach, California, and I made it all the way to Newport Beach. It's the next beach over. 